Welcome to the Papa Rockstars podcast with Anya Bohm, where we talk about all things paparazzi, team training, suggestions, interviews with elite leaders, and more, all to help you grow and explode your paparazzi accessories business to rock star success. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Papa Rockstars podcast. My name is Anya Bohm, and I am your show host. Today, I am super excited to welcome to the call Bridget Rupert, but before we jump into that, don't forget to head on over to paparockstars.com slash Bridget so you can grab today's call image, the notes, you can listen again, share this with your friends, and get a lot of other resources that we have over there. Again, that's paparockstars.com slash Bridget. Let me tell you a little bit about Bridget Rupert before we get to hear all of the awesome things she has for us today. Bridget just celebrated her fifth year with paparazzi, just barely had her anniversary. She is life of the party bronze and has reached executive producer. She is one of our newest elite leaders. Bridget is also Crown Club 10. She has three beautiful kids, and she is from the cold, cold Minnesota. Bridget, did I leave anything out? (laughs) No, but I love how you said the cold, cold Minnesota, because that's so true. (laughs) Well, let's jump into the interview questions. What got you started with paparazzi? Oh, my goodness. Well, honestly, this was never the intention. Like, home business, nothing like that was ever the intention that I wanted to do. I had just had my second child, and at night, like, up all night because I'm breastfeeding, and I, like, couldn't get any sleep. Really just not good. And... Facebook was, like, my (laughs) go-to just because there's, like, so much stuff on there, and I would get, like, so bored. And the garage sale sites in our town had just, like, started to, like, boom. And I didn't have a job, and my husband was off working away, like, really far away. And I was just so bored, and I just remember seeing this little advertisement on one of the garage sale sites, and I was like, what? no way, like, this is five bucks, and I, like, really miss my first daughter's, like, childhood, because I had her when I was really, really young, and I started college right away, and I actually did, like, four years of college plus a certificate, and also I went through the Minnesota Police Academy, like, all at the same time, and I did it all in two years, and so I missed a ton of her childhood, and so when I got pregnant with the second one, I was, like, this can't happen again. Like, I can't miss their childhood. Like, I want to stay home. Charles was making really good money, but not, like, great money. Like, we were definitely, like, penny pinchers for sure. And I saw the advertisement, and at first I was like, oh, I don't know. And so Chastity Peterson is my sponsor, and she had already sent, she had sent, like, all this info for me and was like, oh, it's so awesome, and, like, it's only five bucks, and I had all these questions, and I spent, like, all night, like, literally all night talking to this woman on Facebook, and by morning, I was like, this is what I want to do, like, I'm going to do this because literally I loved the fact that we could, you know, stay at home, we didn't have any, like, quotas or anything like that, and it was affordable, and the town that I live in, it's a smaller town, it's definitely a place where everybody's looking for, like, a good bargain. Everybody's looking for, like, a good sale price. So I knew that it was going to be really popular here. And I hadn't heard of it. So that means nobody else probably heard of it because I was, like, all over Facebook all the time. So it was just one of those things where I'm like, all right, I'm definitely going to do this. The only thing that really kind of killed it at first was that it was a $300 kit when I started. They didn't have the $99 kit. That was a lot of money like a ton of money to get and Charles did leave me with like a big chunk of change because he was going to be gone for like six weeks but I didn't want to use any of that money (laughs) so going back to the garage sale site I went through my house and sold so much stuff and it was just ridiculous like who the crap needs three crock pots if you have three crock pots, like, there's something wrong. I'm sure, like, half the women right now are like, I have three crock pots. <laughs> you don't need three crock pots. And I didn't even know I had three crock pots. 
there was just so many things in my house that I was like, I can do without this right now. Like, I don't need it. And I know that someone else will buy it. And so I just, like, went totally mad wild. And it took me a week. That's it. It took me a week to come up with all the money for the starter kit. And that was basically it. I joined five days later. What an amazing story. And I love how you said that you had to sell, like, your extra crockpots to get your starter kit because a lot of us have things <laughs> kicking around that we really don't need. And we could just sell that extra blender. Like, do you really need a case of Dia Maker? Probably not. And I sold right? one. <laughs> <laughs> and now you could buy 15 of those if you really wanted them. <laughs> exactly. It's perfect. <laughs> What is your paparazzi why? Why do you do paparazzi? I started doing paparazzi because of the money. When I started, like, I like jewelry. I've always liked jewelry, but I never was like, I'm going to wear a ton of jewelry or I'm going to have jewelry that matches everything. I probably had a couple pair of earrings, like a really nice, nice necklace, and that was like it, and like a ring, you know, And it wasn't that I didn't like to wear jewelry. It's just that it wasn't a necessity to me. So when I started, it definitely was, like, about the money. And it was just so nice to pamper myself. It was so nice. It was so incredibly nice. I just didn't want to live paycheck to paycheck anymore. I knew how to make, like, $50 last on a family of four, like, for two weeks. And honestly, the majority of it was like beans, rice, and ramen noodles. It wasn't that great, you know. It just, I didn't want to live like that anymore. Pinching pennies is so, so hard. Like, we've been there so many times. And actually, when I think I've shared this before on a different call, but when I purchased my starter kit, my husband had been unemployed for five months. Like, we were living the definition of pinching pennies. And that is one of the things that drove me personally to paparazzi because I was determined to never be in that situation again. Like, I was determined to, yeah, to make that solid foundation for our family so that we wouldn't have to live like that and scraping from paycheck to paycheck. So I love that you said that as well. Now, have you found that your why has changed from when you started five years ago to being an executive producer and having a huge oh my gosh yeah. now <laughs> um definitely has changed like so much and I feel like it's always going to change because you like hit another level and so then you kind of persevere for more so obviously when I first started it was the money like I just wanted to be able to help out Charles was working so much I never got to see him ever the kids never got to see him and so then it changed. Like, at that point, once I started making money, and I made so much money my first month. Like, it was crazy. I had my launch party the day that I got my kit. Like, as soon as my kit was there and I didn't have displays, like, I didn't have money to buy displays. Are you serious? I didn't have any of that. We had this, like, black sheet. It was a bed sheet, you guys. I washed it. Don't worry. I washed this black bed sheet that I had. I have no idea why I had a black bed sheet. Don't ask. And I, I like, put boxes underneath, like, different size boxes underneath it. So I would make, like, different levels of things, like, layers and stuff. And I just, like, draped the jewelry on this table. And that was it. That was legit my entire display. I didn't have anything else, and I wasn't willing to spend any more money because I just spent $300. I went to all my neighbors. I lived in a townhome complex, and I didn't know, like, half of them, to be honest, and I would just, like, knock on the door, and it was so embarrassing. Like, at that point, when you don't have that much money and you are, like, on medical assistance, food assistance, and you're just trying to get by, you don't have shame. Like, you, there's no room for shame, right? Like, you just need to go out, put your pride aside, and be like, hey, like, this is what I'm doing. There's nothing wrong with it. Like, come and come over. Like, we can have some drinks, and you can look through all this stuff. And that's exactly what I did is I went to all these people in my townhome. And it was crazy because these people showed up, and I didn't know them, which is really weird, to be honest, but they just, like, came into my home, and I'm like, oh, hey, like, come and check this out. So it's kind of cool because it really opened up to people that I would have never probably gotten to know. And they came into my home, and I sold 
97 items out of my kit. So our kit had 100 items. It was a $300 kit. I had 100 items, and I sold 97 items. <laughs> and I just remember, like, after everybody left, I, like, just bawled. <laughs> it was, like, crazy. And that is seriously when I knew I was like, oh, my gosh, like, this is it. It's totally going to happen. Like, I'm going to be able to do this, and I'm going to be able to help out. And I never told Charles, just an FYI. He did not know the entire time. He didn't know when I bought my kit. I, like, totally kept everything from him because I was so worried he was going to be mad at me for spending over $300, like, selling all this stuff and having this big chunk of money and, like, not doing something, like, more productive with it, like, productive in his mind. And so I just remember, like, no, I'm not going to tell him. I'm just going to keep selling. So I did 17 parties my first month, and it was so crazy. The first thing I bought ever, ever, I'm going to tell you this right now, was the freezer chest. <laughs> it sounds so stupid because you're like, a freezer chest. But that was like a sign of having lots of money to be able to, like, pack food away. Because I wasn't able to do that, you know. We didn't have, like, a ton of food in the cupboards. It was like a freezer chest. <laughs> like, I could see the light, like, the halo light coming down, like, ah, <laughs> and it was so awesome. So, definitely, like, my why now, if you were to be, like, what is your why, like, today, my why would be, like, to retire in 10 years or something and be able to have, like, a good chunk of change for the three kids to have when they, like, turn 18 and go to college and be able to, like, travel because I love traveling and I love to camp. So I think that would be my, my my why if you were to ask me, like, right now. That would be my why. I love how it has morphed from, like, a chest freezer, which, I mean, let's be honest, Minnesota, nine months out of the year, outside is a chest <laughs> freezer, right? You're like, why did you buy that, Bridget? Like, you had one outside. Did I mention we lived in a townhome complex? Like, <laughs> You could get something outside, okay? <laughs> that's true. That's true. And now it's morphed into retirement and financial freedom, and the, your dreams have just expanded exponentially. I just love that. Well, let's jump from that super inspirational why. We're going to shift into your worst paparazzi moment, that moment that you could have given up because, let's face it, we have those hills and those valleys, and Everyone, even the elite leaders in paparazzi experiences that. So that's kind of the basis behind this question is so everybody else in paparazzi will realize the elite leaders have probably had worse moments than they have had up to this point and kind of humanize you guys a little bit. So, Bridget, take us to that moment. Tell us a story of, like, your worst paparazzi moment. <laughs> so, obviously, now paparazzi is, like, my life. Um <laughs> In life, I mean, I work a lot. I work a lot. Uh, me and Anya had talked about this before. Like, socializing and things like that is super hard just because I feel like a lot of my friends now are paparazzi people. And so um, paparazzi is definitely life. And while I haven't had any, like, specific moments in paparazzi where, like, something happened in paparazzi where I wanted to quit, but when you have, okay, a regular job, and they always say, like, leave your family stuff at the door, and, like, and then when you're going home, leave your business at your business, you know what I mean, like, don't bring it home, and so with paparazzi, that has kind of been, like, the biggest thing where there will be, like, certain things, if something affects me in my life, it almost affects my business which is really hard because we, as a consultant, we're very, we have to be very highly motivated. So if you have outside things that happen, it's really hard to keep your motivation when you can't just show up. It's not like a regular job where you just work the hours and you still get paid. You might work the hours, but if you're not, like, putting in energy and working stuff that actually is, like, worth something and it's going to, like, push your business better, then it doesn't help. So I had to, like, give you that, like, little backdrop before I go into this. 
<laughs> this is such a big deal. Um, so, uh, Charles, oh, this is going to sting. <laughs> um, we realized, like, that we just weren't good for each other anymore. In August um, of last year, we decided that we were going to separate. Which you can imagine was super, super hard. And I got to tell you, there were definitely days that I did not want to work where I would wake up and I just, I didn't even want to do anything, nothing. I, it just was so hard. It was so hard to talk to team members and try to motivate them when I wasn't motivated myself, like at all. And that was when I wanted to quit. I wanted to just be done. I didn't want to do it anymore. And it wasn't because I didn't love paparazzi. I just thought, like, in life in general, my life wasn't happy, you know. And so I remember just being like, maybe I should just quit. You know, I, I was a premier producer, and I just, didn't have my heart in it anymore. I just remember like one day being like, but Bridget, like you have all of this stuff, like you have to pay for this. And that's when my why, like we talked about before, like really changed back to like, you have to survive now because you have three kids and you have this house, this beautiful house that you have to take care of, you know, and you need to do this. It wasn't a option anymore like I couldn't just like having three kids you can't just like sit back and let bills collect and stuff like that and so what I did was I can remember like I watched like some really sad movies um and the pursuit of happiness oh my gosh I remember watching that like three times and sometimes you just need to cry right you just need to get it all out and I just bawled, and then bawled, and then bawled, and I bawled. And I kept thinking, like, all right, you have to do this for the kids. It's not about you. This isn't your life. It's your kids' life. You need to, you know, make it better. You have to keep going. And so what I did is all of this energy that I had thinking about my failed marriage, basically, I put into my business. Instead of sitting there and, you know, sobbing over, you know, what I didn't or did do, I just took all that energy and I was like, I'm going to talk to someone. And the first day was really hard. It was really hard to get on the phone and just talk to somebody because I didn't, nobody knew this was going on. So in the process of this, like nobody knew, our family didn't know nothing. Charles had moved out. He got his own place. And I really just didn't want to talk about it with our family just because, that was really hard for me to accept. We didn't know if that was going to be, like, a finalized thing. So instead of, like, going out and hanging out with friends, I really just focused on taking care of my kids and running my business. And I'm not going to say that it was, like, a blessing, but I did rank and I made a lead. So, (laughs) like, there is a sunny side of it. So, when you ask me if there was a time that you wanted to quit, it definitely wasn't because of paparazzi. I mean, but that definitely was a time where I was just like, I think I'm just going to quit. Like, I just can't handle, I can't do my life and and not think about all the wrong that was going on at that time and try to motivate other people when I didn't have any motivation myself. Bridget, I just want to take a minute to acknowledge how emotional that was for you. And thank you for sharing that with us because those are the moments that your life and your business, they're totally intertwined. And those are the moments where you do have to find your inner strength and go back to that why. And sometimes it's not super fun. But the thing that I love the most about that is 
can everybody listening, can you tell how real Bridget is? Like she is truly genuine. She's passionate <laughs> about what she does. She's passionate about paparazzi. She's passionate about her family. And I think that just comes through so much. So I have to thank you for sharing that. <laughs> I'm just like a really big baby. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, you're passionate. And a lot of passionate people, those emotions are just so close to the surface. So I love that. Now, what is the lesson you want everyone to take from your moment? I have a lot of team members that will message me and be like, I think I'm going to quit, you know. And I I have to be like, why? You know, why are you thinking about quitting? And the funny thing is, is the more that we talk, it always ends up coming down to outside things it always ends up coming down to not anything that has to do with the business but they're just not having they're not having a good time in their life right now like it's just not a good time there's lots of outside pressure from the world there's pressure from family you know maybe your husband doesn't believe in what you're doing maybe you know your family members don't support you because it's just a direct sales thing because I gotta tell you I had that I totally had that until I showed him a paycheck and was like, what's up? They didn't believe in any of the stuff that I was doing. They they thought it was such a scam. They thought I was so stupid. And, you know, nobody, none of my family members showed up to my, um, my launch party. And it was very devastating for me because it was something that I really, really wanted to make it work and I believed in it. And so just don't let outside things Steer your life, steer your life away from being progressive and inspiring and just doing awesome with paparazzi in general. Don't don't let that happen. If anything, do what I did and use that energy to really put into your business. And that might be a really good reason to be in touch with that why, like your core, why you start a paparazzi, not like a superficial, like, well, because it's fun. Because then when things get difficult with your life or with your business, then you can definitely come back to that. Yes. Now, Bridget, what is a habit that you have that contributes to your success? It would be consistency for sure. Definitely consistency. And it's not just, like, consistency with, like, just selling or just recruiting. you got to do it all. You have to do it all. My consistency is daily. It's all day. I make lists. I am always posting in my group. I'm always talking to team members. I talk to at least four of my team members a day. I go through my first levels, and then I move down the levels, and I just call people, and I talk to them. And it's really cool because when you do call them, you really kind of like piggyback ideas off of each other. And I have a lot of team members that when I'm not feeling inspired, just talking to them, they're just like so like, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited, especially like brand new team members. I love talking to them because they're just so excited and they're so new. And I'm like, ooh, give me that energy. Like, pass it on to me, like right through the phone, please, because I need that. It's so definitely a consistency. I know a lot of people – Especially, this is my full-time job, obviously. I get, I stay at home. I don't just, like, sit on my butt all day. I'm always doing things around the house. i got to keep it clean because I'm OCD, and I live here. I'm always here. i got to, you know, I do schooling with my kids. It's just there's a lot of stuff that's going on. And so my consistency is 15 minutes. And I know that sounds really weird. But what I do so that I'm able to do a lot of stuff throughout the day is I do each thing for 15 minutes. So if that means I go do laundry for 15 minutes, I go do the dishes for 15 minutes, I call somebody for 15 minutes, I post for 15 minutes, I do ideas for 15 minutes, I write down in my journal some ideas, I watch an inspirational video for 15 minutes. It's it's all 15-minute increments, and that's how I have been able to do a lot of stuff. And then I also make sure that I take a break. And I think that's another thing that a lot of people forget is that you need to take a break. Your mind needs to take a break. So I do a lot of meditation. I do a meditation in the morning when I wake up. I know that sounds weird because you just woke up, so your brain's not really working. But it really does help to relax because I noticed before I would wake up and almost be like in a frenzy, like, oh, my gosh, I have so much stuff I need to do, and I need to get out of bed now and get dressed and get the kids and make some lunch and make breakfast and blah, 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 all this stuff. And so now 
I wake up and I, I meditate for a little bit. So I definitely make sure that I take some time out of for myself and for my uh, my mind and my heart. And I take time out for the kids. I will spend, obviously, I don't do the 15-minute rule with them. Um, it adds up to be a lot, I swear. <laughs> um, but I, 15 minutes is definitely one of those things, the consistency. It has helped so much throughout the years that I've been with paparazzi. It has definitely helped a lot. And doing lists, oh, my gosh, lists help so much. With women in general just always have a ton of stuff on their mind, and we're kind of, we're like the squirrel chasers. We're the dog that sees a squirrel, and they're like, squirrel, you know, we're those people because there's just always so much going on. And so it definitely helps. Consistency is definitely something that I really push my team on to always try to sell something every single day, always talk to your team members, always try to recruit every single day, always do a booking blitz. I do a booking blitz every single day, 15 minutes, you guys. It really, really does help. I need to get better at doing 15-minute chunks because I tend to hyper-focus on one thing, like today was cleaning my kitchen. So my kitchen looks great, but the rest of my house is trashed, and I didn't work near as much of my business as I probably should. So I love that. <laughs> 15 minutes and then break. So if I can clean the yes. kitchen for 15 minutes and then do something in my business and then spend, you know, 35 minutes running kids everywhere or whatever you need to yes. do, but at least you'll get that 15-minute chunk in there. It doesn't feel like you're using as much energy if you really do a focused 15 minutes because you're changing what you're doing instead of focusing on something for, you know, a couple hours where you're going to get tired and you just can't focus anymore. You do small increments to focus things, but then you're changing them up. So it's not like your brain is getting tired. Now, do you have a timer that you just set for 15 minutes and then you just do something really quick? Or how I do sound you, how so do you do hardcore, that? don't I? <laughs> I'm not <laughs> that hardcore. No, I sound really hardcore. But, no, I just, you know, if you think about it, it takes 15 minutes to do the dishes. Legit. If you do dishes every single day, it'll probably take you 50, a good 15 minutes to do the dishes. People don't realize how long 15 minutes really is. Go do a workout, a cardio workout for 15 minutes. You know how long that is. Now, think about it, the same thing with cleaning. It never actually takes me 15 minutes to fold one load of laundry. You know, it takes me probably 10 minutes. One load, you guys, one load. Not four loads, one load. You know, so things like that. It only takes me 15 minutes to do certain things, you know, maybe dust the living room. If it's a focused 15 minutes. I love that word, focus. And I think that the the morning meditation, I think that's, at least for me, that's what I find really helps with the meditating in the morning. Not to quiet my mind or to organize my thoughts from the day. It's to gain that focus and that direction that I need for my day and just start out with the calm and yes. the peace and the direction instead of waking up, like you said, kind of haggard and like, whoa, okay, let's just go, go, go. <laughs> yes, exactly. Now, what advice would you give to a brand new paparazzi consultant just getting started in their business? Stop thinking so much. <laughs> I love that people think so much and they want everything like planned out specifically and accordingly and it's so perfect. I love that. That That is me. But stop doing that. Just start. The day you buy your kit, start. Tell people about it. Don't wait until your kit comes. And then, you know, think about having a launch party or ask somebody, hey, what do you guys think about doing this party? Just do it. Just start. Don't aim. I remember Misty Kirby one time, and I can't remember the training. I think it was at convention, and I want to say it was Paint the Town Pink. But she talked about how businesses are – like our business and with us selling isn't like aiming a gun and shooting. You don't, like when normally when you go to like a target practice, you are going to aim it and then you're going to shoot. And with paparazzi, it is not like that. You shoot, you just shoot, you know, and then you slowly aim as you're shooting. And, and so you tweak things a little bit more because everybody's business is going to be different. Everything is going to work different for you. What works for me might not work for you. What I do when I sell, maybe you don't want to do it that way. And so just do it. Just start. Don't think about it. Don't think about what people are going to think about you, about selling this. Just do it. Just sell it. 
what a great analogy. And if you're shooting and you're shooting consistently, like think of a MK-47 or an automatic machine gun. I don't know my guns very well. If you can yeah. tell. <laughs> you're going to hit something. You're going to hit something. Exactly. It was going, duh, 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 duh. you're going to hit something with all of those bullets versus taking a handgun and going, like trying to aim. Yes, it's definitely exactly. our exactly. business is not like that. It doesn't need to be perfect. I, you know, there's all these people that are out there. Oh, but I, I want to do a really fancy display, and they put all this money into their displays. I know some of my team members have spent hundreds of dollars in their displays, and I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, I need to buy business cards, and I need to do this. Are you serious? Like, I had a sheet. I had a sheet, and that's all I did. I didn't even have business cards when I first started. You know, it wasn't about that. It was just about selling because I had the product. I don't need my business card to sell. Yes, does it help in the future? Yes, it totally helps. But I already have what I need to sell it, and that is the product. I don't need anything else. And a lot of times I think people are trying to hit the bullseye, and they're trying to get things through on the first shot. Like growing up, my mom always yes. said, almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades and I'm going to throw paparazzi in there because yes. somebody's going to see you sling and bling and they're going to be like dude I want 60 bucks I want to yes. be able to pick up my kids and pick up 120 dollars too you know so it doesn't have to be exactly perfect you just have to be getting it out there and so that's a that's a new phrase almost counts in horseshoes hand grenades and paparazzi <laughs> exactly exactly what would you suggest to a consultant who's feeling stuck in their business? What would you tell them to do? This is a really hard question for me because I think it all depends on what type of team member you are. So if you're the type of team member that needs a list to do something and that's what motivates you is just like getting things done and you just need somebody to tell you what to do, start selling right now. Book a party, do a booking blitz, do 10 parties in one month, Talk to five people per day, give somebody a compliment, and know your business. But if you're somebody that needs to be motivated in a different way, like in your mind, I'm definitely one of those people. I'm, I talk about lists a lot, but I definitely need my heart into something. Like I said, switch your why, and you talked about that before too. When I was going through all of my family crap in August, I had to switch I had, it wasn't about just like having fun. To be honest, my heart was not in it. it. It wasn't. I was just there. But I knew that I needed to make money because I couldn't get behind on my bills. I was paying for everything. I have the house, you know, that's $800. I have the van, that's another $300. Phone bill is $200. You know, Natalie's dance classes, the food, our bills, the dentist, everything. That was my motivation. So if you have to switch your motivation and switch your why, then that's what you need to do. Now, if you have another job, I, I always notice people that have other jobs, their motivation is lost because they have that other job to fall back on. So I get it. I understand. And that's okay. That's definitely okay. Obviously, the reason why you joined Paparazzi was to make some extra money. You know, maybe it's not to do this full time. Maybe it's just to, you know, do some side stuff and make some extra money. Well, then figure something out that you really want to buy and put that down and figure out how many pieces that you need to sell. You know, that it, it, it talk to your sponsor. Oh, my gosh, I know so many people that don't try to get motivated from other people and I have to reach out and I'm just like, why are you not motivated? Like, call me, talk to me, talk to them on the phone. Watch an inspirational video. You just, you got to switch it up. I'm going to highlight a couple of things I jotted down while you were given that advice. So you said, talk to your sponsor, watch an inspiring video, make a list, book a party, or get back in touch with your why. I think any of those things are golden on their own, like knowledge bomb, but I'm sure there's other ones in there I missed as well. So I'm you. sure that there's so many. It's so, I get it, right? It's hard. We're women. We're up and down like nobody's business. So make paparazzi your outlet. Make paparazzi your happy place. I get super freaking happy when I see my PayPal account like jump up. I get so excited when I have a really good party. I love when my oldest comes down and does like a live video with me because she just thinks it's the coolest thing ever to be on Facebook because I don't let her have a Facebook account. 
You know what I mean? Like, I love seeing that. And so I can tell you right now, like, once you have a good party, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm really back into this. Like, I don't even know why I stopped. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) It's so true. It digs. Sometimes it's just the little things that will get you back in with your whole heart and working it again. What is a quote that inspires you? You can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. And I absolutely love, I love this. I'm definitely one of those people that have learned how to embrace the highs with the lows. For me, life is definitely just a bunch of waves. And so you have to know how to ride the low ones, and you know how to ride the high ones where you're going to get on that board. And I don't even surf, but I just think this is absolutely beautiful. Oh, I completely agree. That's one I haven't heard before, but I'm in love with it now. <laughs> I'm going to have to, like, stitch it on a pillow or something. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I'm sure we can find something. <laughs> it's all over. <laughs> what is a book you'd say is a must-read and why? So I really like the book Sailing Forward. I've read it, like, ten times now. It's so amazing. It's definitely something that I have a hard time feeling. So this book is all about changing your perspective and it's not just like about business it's about everything and I think that's what I love so much about this book is that there's tons of things that you can utilize in your everyday life and I think like one of the best parts it had talked about that failing the word failing and to fail is totally subjective so it's just all how you look at it and like what you perceive it is so this book is really good because it definitely changed the way that you look at things perspective-wise. Um, the other book, and it's books, it's a series, and I know this is going to be like, what? Is basically any of the Harry Potter books. <laughs> and I know I'm such a kid, but let's just give it up to Harry for being like the raddest kid ever. Like, totally looks like he's going to fail, like these kids hate him, pick on him, but he's just such a cool hero. And there's just so many, these books are just so big in my life. (laughs) Like I was, I think I was in like sixth grade when they came out. So don't be judging. I'm like this little geek over here, but there's just so many life lessons that you can learn from Dumbledore himself if you wanted to. There's some really good, uh, quotes that he has throughout the books and I just think the series is so awesome. I know that sounds so funny because it's like a kid's storybook but it really is true. There's so many life lessons that you can learn from these books if you kind of delete the magic a little bit. Ooh, I love that. So Failing Forward and Harry Potter series. Yes. (laughs) Perfect. Okay, we're down to the last question. So here on Uh the Pop Rock Stars podcast, (laughs) we like to do a weekly call challenge. So what is one thing you would challenge the listeners to do in the next seven days to take action in their paparazzi businesses? All right. So the next seven days, I know paparazzi did the no excuses, and it literally was like no excuses. And so I'm kind of, I'm not being totally original because I kind of am, but I'm not. Okay, so the next seven days for one week, you need to, like, literally eat, sleep, drink, paparazzi, sell every single day, sell something every single day. You need to talk to at least, like, two people about joining or just about, it doesn't even have to be, like, joining. Like, oh, hey, do you want to join? It can be, like, hey, you know, talk about how much you love paparazzi and maybe they ask you a question on like have you been doing this for a while or and kind of go a little bit beyond the answer you know things like that to talk to a couple people a day and just be consistent like totally consistent hardcore 100 percent focused working for seven days because i guarantee you there's people i know people that only work their business like a couple days a week and i'm like oh my gosh You can't complain anymore if you don't, like, if you're not working that much. If you are working three hours a day, you need to up your hours, most definitely, especially right now because it is crazy. So for seven days, we'll break it down for you. Seven days, you are going to be totally consistent every single day. You're going to post in your customer group and try to sell something every single day. 
do a booking blitz every single day. That's a good one. And also talk to two people every single day. It can be anything about paparazzi. That is perfect. Bam. What a way to end the call. Can you guys see why I love Bridget so much? She's just amazing. I love her energy. I love her spirit and her spunk. We've had a couple vacations together with paparazzi, and she's just so much fun. So thank you so much, Bridget, for joining us on the show today. Now head on over to paparockstars.com slash Bridget to keep the party going. Now you have your challenge for the next seven days, so have a rockin' week, everybody. Bye-bye.